chairpersons, uh, ladies and gentlemen. At the outset, I would like to thank the scientific committee for inviting me to talk on small molecules in rheumatoid arthritis. Now, if one looks at the last 10 years in the field of rheumatoid arthritis, they have been dominated by the 20th letter of the English alphabet, the letter T. There are three doctrines which are firmly entrenched so far as rheumatoid arthritis is concerned, time to treat, treat to target and last but not the least targeted treatments. Time is of utmost essence and we have just heard Dr. Ashok Kumar about the golden window of opportunity. It does not actually matter what treatment you use, what matters is how soon you get going. So, time is of utmost essence. Then treatment to target, which means that we are now response driven, goal directed and the goal is either remission or low disease activity and what matters is how soon you can achieve that goal. Unlike I think probity in public life, this is one example where means are not important but the end is important which is a low disease activity state. Then finally targeted treatments which have really rewritten the rules of the business. The transition from synthetic to biologic disease modifying anti rheumatic drugs marked a transition from serendipity to specificity. Most of the small molecule disease modifying drugs that you see here were drugs discovered accidentally, rheumatologists adopted those. In contrast, the biologic disease modifying drugs were molecules by design. This is an ever expanding field and we have agents which were approved for use. The cutoff between the small molecules and the biologic DMARDs was this figure of 800 Daltons. This meant that these biologic disease modifying drugs were parentally administered, used recombinant DNA technology for manufacture and were drugs which were expensive. The era of targeted treatments can now be divided into just like you divide the Christian calendar into before Christ and after the death of Christ, you divide it into the era of big molecules and small molecules and the mood point is, is big necessarily better and the bastion was the molecular weight of 800 Daltons and I would draw your attention to this legend, David and Goliath and this is Goliath resplendent in all the armor. The shepherd boy David used a sling, pelted a stone and this catapulted him to glory, went on to become the king of Israel and this bastion of 800 Daltons was breached three weeks ago and as the chair Dr. Rao mentioned, on the 6th of November 2012, the FDA approved the first small molecule for treatment of rheumatoid arthritis, CP690550 with a molecular weight of 504 Daltons and this is Zelzans or tofacitinib citrate. This is orally administered, is a targeted treatment, is not a biologic in the conventional sense, is not manufactured by recombinant DNA technology and now the MAPS and the receptor constructs, the SEPTs have a tough challenge from the NIBS and this is actually one of the most important things that has happened over the past one year. Now coming to the science of small molecules in rheumatoid arthritis, they actually revolve around tyrosine kinase inhibition. Tyrosine kinase is a subclass of protein kinases. They transfer a phosphate group from ATP to a protein in the cell and plays an important role in intracellular signaling. Three varieties of tyrosine kinase inhibitors are being tried out in rheumatoid arthritis. 
the spleen tyrosine kinase inhibitors, the sick inhibitors, the mitogen activated protein kinase inhibitors, the MAP K inhibitors as they are called or the Janus kinase inhibitors. Of the sick inhibitors, it is fostamitinib which is being tried. This is converted into an active metabolite R406 which is a highly selective sick inhibitor and this has been tried out in phase 3 trials. The adverse effects that have been reported include infection, aminotransferase elevation, depletion of the white cell count, neutropenia, hypertension and diarrhea and this is something which is being tried out. Same also is true for the MAP kinase inhibitors. There are three families, the P38 MAP kinases, the ERKs or the extracellular signal regulated MAP kinases and the junks and of these P38 MAP kinase has been targeted. The agents which have been tried out include Pamapinod and VX702 but the initial results have been disappointing and the reason that has been attributed is that P38 is probably too downstream and what you have is induction of the upstream kinases which can redirect the signaling pathway. So which is why this is not met with clinical success. The important practical group that has received a lot of attention are the jack inhibitors. There are four Janus kinases which have been identified, JAK1, JAK2, JAK3 and TIC2 which is tyrosine kinase 2. Tofacitinib or Zelzan preferentially inhibits signaling of JAK3 and JAK1. The effect on JAK2 is much less and this in turn blocks signaling for several cytokines including IL-2, 4, 7, 9, 15 and 21 that are integral to lymphocyte functioning. The concept is simple, once you have a cytokine which attaches to the receptor, you have a receptor polymerization, this in turn activates the JAKs, the JAKs phosphorylate the receptors that dock stat and once you have the stats that dock there, they dimerize to the nucleus of the cell, give rise to gene transcription and this is what can be blocked by Zelzans, the first orally administered targeted treatment which has now become available. This was the subject matter of two seminal papers in the New England Journal of Medicine on the uh, 9th of August 2012, there was an accompanying editorial on kinase inhibition. These two trials were the oral solo trial and the oral standard trial. In oral solo study, which was a six month study, the primary endpoints that were studied were ACR20, the HAC disability index and DAS28 and these were two dosages that were utilized. We now know subsequently that the FDA has given approval for 5 milligrams twice daily. But in this study, the investigators utilized 5 milligrams twice daily, 10 milligrams of TOFA twice daily, placebo followed by 5 milligram, placebo followed by 10 milligram, hydroxychloroquine was allowed to be continued and as you can see, this was moderate to severely active disease. If you look at the 68 joint counts, close to 30 tender joints, close to 17 swollen joints. So this was active rheumatoid arthritis and I draw your attention to this fact that these were patients who were heavily experienced. Nearly 20 percent had received prior TNF inhibitors other biologics in varying proportion of patients and more than 80 percent of this patient population had received methotrexate and were continuing to have active disease despite receiving methotrexate. And if you look at the efficacy measures, 
you have two dosages of tofa in this study 5 and 10 milligrams and using both these uh, dosages the ACR 20 responses were better as compared to the placebo. So also the uh, health assessment questionnaire and this is the minimal clinically important difference and this was also seen with DAS but the DAS remission was not significantly different although the improvement in the DAS scores was. From a clinical perspective I would like to draw your attention to one point that amongst patients who had inadequate response to TNF inhibitors nearly 40 percent of patients receiving 5 milligram and 60 percent receiving 10 milligram of TOFA showed significantly better responses as compared to uh, the placebo. Adverse effects, common adverse effects were headaches, upper respiratory tract infection, of note neutrophil counts declined, no serious infections were seen with neutropenia and the LDL cholesterol was elevated but the LDL HDL cholesterol ratios remained the same. In the same issue of NEJM was published another paper the oral standard study which compared TOFA with adalimumab as the active comparator. The study design was active rheumatoid arthritis moderate to severely active patients received either 5 milligrams dose with methotrexate and these were people who had inadequate response to methotrexate. The other group received 10 milligrams of TOFA, the third group received adalimumab and there was also a placebo arm which then went on to receive tofacitinib after 3 months and as you can see the ACR20 responses were significantly better and compared as compared to placebo compared well with adalimumab and they used a technique which is known as imputation of no response to account for missing data and advancement penalty meant that patients who did not respond at 3 months were taken to mean as they would never have a response even though subsequently some of them met the improvement criteria. So this is with advancement penalty which is very stringent and this is without advancement penalty and as you can see tofacitinib held its own against uh, adalimumab. This was the improvement in the health assessment questionnaire and this was using DAS 28 at 6 months. Practical details. The dose that has been approved by FDA is 5 milligrams twice daily, approved for use in patients who have active RA with inadequate response to methotrexate or intolerance. Some of our patients get anticipatory MSs with methotrexate and they just will not touch the drug, can be used as monotherapy or in combination with non-biologic disease modifying drugs. The root of metabolism is 70 percent hepatic, 30 percent renal. You reduce the dose in moderate to severe renal insufficiency or moderate hepatic impairment. Uh, do not touch the drug if you have ANCs below absolute neutrophil count below 1000, absolute lymphocyte count less than 500 and a hemoglobin less than 9. Side effect profile, infections, opportunistic infections, tuberculosis, neutropenias, lymphopenias, aminotransferase elevation, increase in lipids but the ratio remains unchanged. What kind of infections? Well you can come across esophageal candidiasis, cytomegalovirus infection, cryptococcosis, atypical mycobacterial infection but of particular interest to rheumatologists in our country tofacitinib and tuberculosis, 12 patients in the phase 3 studies experienced active tuberculosis both pulmonary and extra pulmonary, one patient in the United States, the remaining patients were in countries with higher rates of tuberculosis. Now this is a drug by design not by accident, the program involved 
a large number of investigators spread across 44 countries and this is what has been the cumulative experience to date. 500 patients exposed to TOFA for more than 3 years, close to 1000 for 2 years and as you can see more than a year about 3000. So a fairly robust uh, backup by uh, the studies that are available and these are some studies which have been published in abstract form. One question which arises is, it is clinically effective, but what about structural efficacy, the hard endpoint in rheumatoid arthritis and there are two studies that are available which is oral scan and oral start which showed that tofacitinib inhibited structural damage in modified total sharp score also looking at erosion scores and joint space narrowing scores. So tofacitinib is clinically effective. The initial radiologic data also seems to be promising. The next important question, which way is the science headed? We have talked about targeted treatments and we move from TTs to PTs. The next big challenge or the holy grail for the rheumatologist is to identify which drug for what patient and I think this is going to be the biggest challenge as rheumatologists talk not about targeted treatment alone but personalized treatment in the disease that is rheumatoid arthritis. Thank you very much for your kind attention.